irritates my nervous system much like snake venom and there's problems and let's talk about it. That there was Casey from Camera Conspiracies and he recently made a video called Top 10 Worst Problems in DaVinci Resolve still in 2022 and he's having some issues, some little workflow issues with DaVinci Resolve. Now some of these are proper problems, others are workarounds or little workflow tips which can help to get around them so I figured I'd hop on, make a little video and try and help out if I can. This, whenever I drag things in here, it should be in order, same order here, but you see this first file? Not there, is it? So this first one looks just to be a simple sort order issue. Your Windows File Explorer was done alphabetically, but as soon as you import it into DaVinci Resolve, it will be sorted by the sort order of your media pool. So here I've got 7201 to 7216, and they're all in order. Whereas if I open them up into DaVinci Resolve, we've now got 11, 5, 9, 13, it's all over the show. And the reason is, this sort order. So if we click on this little icon up here in the media pool, we've got sort. Mine are currently being sorted by duration, which is why they're all over the place. If I simply change that to file name, now we've got 201 to 216 in alphabetical order, exactly as we would expect them to be. But while I'm here, I've got two other quick tips. One, you can import folders into your media pool from Windows, makes life a little bit easier. And number two, you can actually pop out your media pool. So let's just run through that real quick. So here's my folder. What I tend to do, I'm gonna go back one, I'm gonna to go to this original folder. Rather than adding the individual files, what I like to do, I'm just gonna click on the raw vlog folder drop this into the media port over on the left where the bins are. And what it would do is just replicate the file structure that I had within Windows. So I've got my raw vlog, I've got new, and I've got everything within there. So that's kind of handy. I always make my file structure within Windows first, audio, video, PNGs, whatever, and then drag it in and I know where everything is. On my raw vlog, right click, I'm gonna open as a new window. And that will open this. So this is your media port, but in its own window. So then I can just close the media port, and if I just Alt and Tab on my keyboard, I can switch between DaVinci Resolve and this media pool folder. This can go anywhere, it can go on a separate screen. So at any point, just grab, plunk it on there, job done, I've still got my full screen, I could open up my effects library, have it up there, do what I wanna do, switch over to my media pool again, grab this one, dump it on there, job done. If I wanna do multiples, I can, and it will this time work in the right order because it'll be using the sort order of that detached media pool. Why can't I change multiple clips at a time? I select them all, change clip speed. Oh, oh, just the one, huh? Yeah, it's annoying that you can't simply highlight them all and change it. But again, there are some sort of workarounds. There's a couple you can do within the media pool and then one which you can do on the timeline. Now, one of the benefits of having this detached media pool is you can have it much wider. So you can actually see I've got my FVS column here. If you don't see that, you can just right click on the column headings and then you can choose all the data items that you want to see, turn off all the ones that are irrelevant. I haven't actually done that yet, but you can just keep resolution and FPS, for example. So these are all 25 FPS, but I do have some things in here which are 50. So I want these to be 50%. If I right click within the media pool, go to clip attribute, and then I can simply change the video frame rate to 25 and then it will play back at 50% speed when I add it to the timeline. But it's still a bit of a pain to find all of my 50s. So there's a couple workarounds here too. There's actually a magnifying glass at the top of your media pool. Give that a click, you get the search at the top. There's a filter by and I can just change that to FPS, type in 50, and then I've got everything that's 50 within there. I can highlight it all, right click, clip attributes and then change it. But there's a better option, it's called Smart Bins. I've actually made a video about Smart Bins before, so click it, it's around here somewhere. Go have a watch of that, but a real whistle stop tour to show you how it works. Within your media pool, you've got Smart Bins. Now by default, you won't actually have any. What you wanna do is just right click and you add a Smart Bin. And Smart Bins do this. These are the ones I've created in the past. So here I've got two folders, 25 and 50. So if I go to this 50 FPS, what it does is anything that's 50 FPS will automatically be filtered into this folder. Any project, future, old, any project I create, I import my media and this will automatically filter anything that's 50 frames per second. So I can just go in here, select them all, right click, clip attributes and set them all to 50%. If I go to my 25, here's everything that's 25. You can do this for resolutions, frame rates, loads and loads of different stuff. To create them, really simple, we just right click, add a smart bin, give it a name. Let's say I was doing some for 60 FPS, so I can put 60 in there. We've got media pool properties. I wanna change file name to frame rate is 
whatever. I can select the frame rates from here. I'm gonna go with 60. And actually in the background, you can see it's already done the filtering for us. Now, before you click create, make sure you tick this show in all projects box because you can't actually come back and do that retrospectively. But once you've done that, hit create, you'll get this 60 FPS folder and it will just filter out everything that's 60. At any point, you can simply right click, go to edit, and then make any different amendments within here. One of the important ones to bear in mind, there's a little plus over the right, give that a click, and then you can add multiple criteria. So I can change frame rate to resolution. Let's say I'd set this to 1920 and 1080, and then this would just filter everything that's 60 frames and 1080p. Easy peasy, done. Now, if you don't wanna do that, you wanna do everything on the timeline, I'm just gonna grab these two clips that are 50, drop them on here. If I give this one a click, I'm actually going to do this in the inspector because my scaling goes weird, but I'm going to go to speed change, change this to 50, done. So this is now playing at 50%. If I then just click this one on the timeline, hit Control and C to copy, click this one or any others. If I had multiple, I could just highlight them all. And then hit Alt and V, you get this paste attribute. Then you just need to make sure to tick the retime effects down here and ripple if you want it. Click on apply and then it will just change anything you selected to be the same 40 or 50%, whatever you need it to be. And then I move the clip and then press play and it's creating keyframes as I'm doing that. And it does do that most of the time, but when it doesn't, it resets. It just resets back and it won't create a new keyframe. Yeah, keyframes are weird on the edit page. They just are, oh, always have been. Not the easiest thing to do. Blackmagic really need to improve the way that keyframes work on the edit page. Just it could be so much nicer and so much easier to use. Now this specific issue that you've got, I didn't know was there. I figured out what it is. It's kind of stupid. So let me show you. We'll add my keyframe. And then if we play forward, grab it, we can move it around and we get this little line to show that we're adding the keyframes. We can move across, move it over here. And this is all working as you'd expect it to. And then if we went back and hit play, it's gonna follow that line with all of our keyframes. Now the oddity, the issue you are having, if I add this keyframe here, I'm then gonna move my playhead, and we're gonna drag this, that one's worked. Now I'm gonna move my playhead to the end, and let's say I want this to be in a different location. Now this is the thing that's weird. You, what you need to do is make sure you click on the image, not on this big dot in the middle. Watch my playhead here. The playhead is hit here at the end. If I click this center button, it's gonna move my playhead to the previous keyframe. When you click on the actual little white dot, it thinks you're selecting the last keyframe. Look, bing. So then if I try and move it, we're moving the old keyframe, not the new one we want to set. So if I go to the end now, don't click on this center dot, click on the actual PNG anywhere, literally anywhere else but the center, move it, then it works. Don't know why it does that when you click the center, but click anywhere else, it seems to work. I think that's the issue. I replicated it, that seems to do the trick, so hopefully that fixes that one as well. And what the hell is your problem with moving multiple clips around on my timeline? Why does it jump up like 15 spaces? I can never get it to just go. Yeah, this one's caught me out a few times as well. Again, I don't have a fix for it if you're using your mouse and moving it around, it does weird things. You can use keyboard shortcuts, which do make life a little bit easier, but it's still not perfect. So, I mean, let me show you what I've got and we'll, we'll see if it works, eh? Now, once that's selected, hold Alt on your keyboard and then you can use the up and down arrows to just flick it up single tracks. It does make life slightly easier because then you can just go up and down to get it in the right place. Now a separate tip, but it's worth mentioning here. If you do want to use your mouse, once you've got these highlighted, hold shift and then you move up and down. You can't do any lateral movement. So it'll be in exactly the same place, just up or down a track. And then it's a little bit easier to move it left and right. So it kind of works. If you move for one second outside of the timeline spot, your clips are gone forever. Yeah, come across this one a lot. Don't have a fix for it. It's annoying. I would like this one to be fixed as well too, please, black magic, because yeah, pain in the ass. Hmm. Why can't I apply multiple transitions? I wanted warps on all of those. Why do I have to do it individually? Ha, ah, this one, I do have a bit of a fix for. There are different things that you can do with transitions. Now the first one, setting as a standard transition. Find any transition within here. I'm gonna go to this arrow iris, set as standard. And then if we just click this edit point, I can hit Alt and T and it will add that video transition to that point. So I've got my arrow iris here like so. 
Now the same thing applies for audio transitions. So you can see I've got crossfade, it's got the little red marker. For that one, same thing, select your edit point, this time hit Shift and T, and that will add just the audio. So Shift and T to add just audio, Alt and T to add just video, or Control and T to add both your standard video and standard audio transitions. Now that works if I select multiple, so I'm gonna select all these like so, Control T, and it's gonna dump them on there like so. Now, another solution, if you don't wanna set your standard, highlight a bunch of edit points within your effects library, go to video transitions, right click on any of the transitions, and you can add two selected edit points and clips and it will just dump them on. Now, something I've noted, once you've added one as a favorite, so you can see my additive dissolve here, I've already got it set as a favorite, so it appears in my favorites down here. Doesn't work for them. You can't right click on those for some weird reason. Now, another real quick tip while we're here, once you've added one to your timeline, there is another way to really quickly duplicate them. Simply hold Alt, click, drag to another edit point, and you can just make duplicates that way, which is just a little bit quicker than having to click and drag from your effects library every single time. Next one, bringing two pictures in at a time. Say I wanna do that. I just download a couple clips, boom, two pictures. Why do you meld them into a, a double? What do I do with that? This is an old one which has been catching people out for a long, long time. It's actually kind of logical why it's there. Things like Cinema DNG basically come out as loads and loads of different still images, but you want to import them as a video, so import it, it's find the sequence and do the rest for you. So that's kind of why it's there. But yeah, it does trip up when you've just got a bunch of images or photos, whatever, that are named in sequence and you want to import them, it starts to do weird things. Now you can actually turn it off, but it is inconsistent. Honestly, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So it's worth looking, hopefully it'll fix it, but yeah, it's a slightly odd one sometimes. It does like to screw things up. So you can see I've got one, two, three here. It's gonna do the same thing. If I try and drop it on the timeline, it's gonna give me one file and I've got my one to three JPEG within the media pool. Now, interestingly, you will note that if I drag them into my media pool directly, it doesn't do that. It just says one, two, three, rather than doing the combined file. So you could do the drag and drop sort of solution as we ran through in point number one. To actually change it, just hop over to the media tab, which I know not everyone uses. So you have to just hop in here. Make sure you've got your media storage open over here. You've got these three little dots, frame, display mode, auto, individual, sequence. If you just wanted it to do individual, just change it to individual, then in theory it should always show you your three images rather than separately. Now, even though I've got that set, it does still seem to want to do the same thing. It's still gonna give me this one to three. So yeah, a bit of a faff, you do have to import it to your media pool first before adding it on. So meh, kind of a half a fix there, but hopefully some of the other points will have helped alleviate that issue just a tiny bit. Maybe, hopefully, I don't know. So it's like, boom, there's a gap at the bottom. You can't go lower than whatever that number is, 8640? Why the hell is there a limit on how far you can move a file? Yep, didn't know about this. This is a, an issue. I, to be honest, I've never encountered it. I've never had to move things past that point. So yeah, it is an issue. You can only move to 8640. You could sort of try and compound it and then move it again, but that's a bit of a faff as well, so. Yeah, that one needs to be fixed. So if you're taking note, Blackmagic, take a look at that one. Now I've combined in the next two together. But look, some of them are just not. I already linked that, but it wasn't. It didn't hold link. They unlink somehow. I hate you. Whenever I bring that external file in, even though it's the same ass length, it's always one frame off. Just line up, you piece of shit. Now the clip's not linking, I don't have an answer for, that does it like a bug, hopefully that gets fixed. But the clip's not linking and the audio sync issue can kind of be resolved by actually syncing the audio within the media pool instead. This is the way I do it, all my stuff is recorded with separate audio as well, and I sync everything within the media pool. It's generally pretty reliable, generally pretty consistent, and yeah, this is my go-to method. So I've got my detached media pool, let's import a new folder, I've got this one, fast noise, we'll shove that in there. Now you can see I've got Basics MP4 and Basics WAV. So I need to sync all of these up. Now it doesn't actually matter that they're named to the same, they don't have to be, that's just for my own sort of naming structure. All you need to do within that folder, so I've got loads of them to do, I don't need to highlight anything. I simply right click, 
auto sync audio, and then I've got based on time code, based on waveform, and then the option to append as well. So for this example, I'm just gonna do based on waveform and append, it's easier to see what's going on. And what it's gonna do is just analyze all the audio and all the video within that bin and try and sync everything up. So you don't need to highlight them separately or do anything, you can do them all in one big go. It's gonna throw me some errors because some of these are just audio without any video. We've got some PNGs, so I don't care about those. Now if I grab, let's just go with this basics, put this down here. Because we appended, we've actually got a bunch of different audio. So I've got the original baked in at the top, and then I've got the WAV audio, the external audio at the bottom. Now what I could do, I'm gonna hold the Alt key so I can click on the audio separately without selecting anything else. I'll delete that one, delete that one, and then I can just move that up so we've got this audio. Now that's the append. Now that's handy because you can see all the different tracks. Instead, let's open this up. If I simply went to audio sync based on waveform without the append, grab a different one, let's go with this depth map one. Rather than giving us the additional tracks, it's just gonna dump it on there. If we hit play, that's looking pretty good. Now that's kind of like a soft overwrite. You can still get the original back. So I'm gonna open up this media pool again, go to my depth map video, right click, Come down to Clip Attributes, go to the Audio tab. You can see here I've got Linked Channel within the Source Channel. Click that drop down. you can see all of my embedded channels. So that was the original audio. This is my new one. So if I wanted to get it back, I could just go back to Embedded Channel 1, click on OK, and it will change back to the original audio. So there you go. Hopefully that helps some people out that are struggling with the same issues or helps my fellow YouTuber out as well. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out Casey at Camera Conspiracies. Take it easy. I'll see you next time.